Hello students. I'm getting ready now to show you how to use the gizmos called periodic trends. As before, we're going to be going to explorelearning.com. You should already have an account with gizmos. And when you go to your class period, you should be able to see the periodic trends link already installed in your class. Let's see if that's the case. Okay, let's say you come to your class period. In this case, it happens to be chemistry period three. Previously, we worked on electron configuration. You now see here at the bottom, we have a new one of uh, this labeled periodic trend. So we're gonna click on the icon that looks like a rocket. We're gonna begin by looking at the atomic radius, some things we can do with that. We will also have activities that focus on ionization energy and on electron affinity. From time to time, instead of working on this page where it says explore, we may go and look at the trends. On the trends page, you'll see an ability to talk about different trends. So the most basic trends is that we have groups which are called out here by color, but we could also look at the atomic radius where the size of the circles represents their approximate size relative to one another. We could look at the ionization energy. Here, the intensity of the color, according to this key, indicates the amount of energy required. Or we can look at the electron affinity. And again, we have two different colors here and they illustrate a range of energies uh, kilo in given in kilojoules per mole. Now for all three of these periodic trends, we have the ability to go and look at a graph. So this is a graph for atomic radius. This is a graph for ionization energy. This is a graph for electron affinity. So at certain points, you may be asked to refer to the graph and you might need to label the graph. You might need to actually label some of the points. So be aware of that. Okay, so we're gonna start with atomic radius. So we're gonna start with uh, the first element, which is hydrogen. We're gonna click here where it says show ruler and we're gonna go over this ruler and we're going to attach one end of it to the nucleus and we're going to attach another to an electron on the outer shell. Okay, so it says right here that the length is 53 p.m., which is a picometer. A picometer is a trillionth of a meter. So we're going to save that radius. And you now see that a number in picometers is shown for hydrogen. Now, what do we do? Well, we can, we want to advance it. We want to look at other things. So perhaps we could try the next element, which would be helium. But notice now that we're not in the same group we were before. And notice that here at the bottom, hydrogen is on one side and helium is on the opposite side, just like it were, if it was a periodic table. Well, again, we would take our ruler and we would attach it to the outer electron and we would save the radius. So that in a nutshell is how you're going to use this. And you may have to uh, go back and forth and do different things in a different order than what I'm showing you. And again, whatever you're doing here, we ought to be able to see it as a trend and you ought to be able to plot that information here. And again, you can look at this information either in terms of a, of a table or in terms of a graph. Remember also that if you have a hard time interpreting the graph, you can make it bigger or smaller, and you can grab the graph and move it around to see things that might be otherwise difficult to see. So that's our atomic radius. Let's now go and take a brief look at the ionization energy. Again, we're going to start, say, uh, we'll do helium, and uh, we're going to look, look very carefully here. Let's grab our helium, and we're just going to start moving it a little bit closer. I'm just going to move it closer. This is some source of positive charge. What we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out how much energy is required to remove an electron. We're having to move this thing very close. Now, as we get really, really close, 
Ah, see, when you get really, really close, you see that electron start to move. And if you move just enough, it will stick. And then we have a number uh, in kilojoules per mole. That's an amount of energy per mole of substance. And that's a fairly high number. And again, you would go through following instructions. This is lithium. You'll notice, by the way, that we have two circles here, which means there, there's two energy levels. And so we're going to be talking about removing an electron. Well, you see, well, this one's getting ready to move right away. We didn't have to move it as close. And there it goes. And so we have a very different number. So that's what we would do to get data for ionization energy. And again, we can refer to the trend for ionization energy. And you might have to label some points. Finally, our third thing is for a related thing uh, to ionization energy, which is electron aff affinity. And we'll reset here. And let's say we're starting with hydrogen. Okay, so uh, we're going to, once again, we're going to grab our atom. And this is about the ability to add an electron. Notice that there's another electron waiting to be given off here. The question is, how much will this grab another electron? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, and there it went. Okay, so we have a similar process here. Instead of an electron popping off our given atom, we're going to bring it next to a, some source of electrons and see how far it has to go. So we have a number here, and this is a negative number, negative 73 kilojoules per mole. So that's how you would uh, get data from here. And again, you could go to your trend, and you'll see a pattern, and you may have to label some of the points. Along the way, you'll be asked to answer questions, and sometimes the questions will be very straightforward. The answer will be just simply there and given, and other times you may have to write a sentence. So now I'd like to turn our attention uh, to the, the worksheet, again, in terms of how we write things. Uh, you can see here on the first page, uh, we have an illustration that, that shows the ruler or the effect of the ruler, and it asks some questions. And again, a lot of these things that we can write, uh, there's just places you would write them in. If we thought that uh, hydrogen's radius was, uh, I don't know, say 50 picometers, we could just write 50 picometers or 50 p.m., right? We can do that. There's a place for that. So many times you simply are following the instructions and you'll just put those things in. Um, sometimes you might have to put things into tables. So just read the instructions and insert things in the tables, pretty straightforward. But the first thing I really wanna talk about just before we get too deep in it is, is questions like this that say predict. So predict means that you're going to say what you think happens. Of course, then you could be wrong if you don't know for sure what's going to happen. So students are conditioned by the public schools many times to think, I just gotta get the right answer. There's gotta be a right answer. But in, when we're doing labs, and this mimics a lab activity, we're, we're usually doing it to test some hypothesis, which may not be known whether it's true or false. And so the fact is, is that I don't actually care what you predict, but what I do care is that whatever you predict, that there should be a way to test it. Well that's not going to be a problem. So predict, how do you think the radius of the atom will change as you move down in a group? Well, you maybe you know, maybe you think you know, or maybe you think I'll go look in the book and I'll find out. Well, that's not the name of the game here, people. The name of the game is to predict what you think will happen. And for a prediction, uh, unlike some of the short answers, a single line like this is probably not going to be adequate. You're probably going to have to you know, go on and have more than one line worth. Uh, you might have to have to actually have a paragraph to describe what you think is going to happen and why, okay? A good response here would describe what you think would happen and why. Now, again, I don't care if it's true or false. No one's gonna lose any points if I happen to think your prediction is incorrect. But let me tell you how you will use points. You will lose points if you leave this blank. Points lost or if you write something like this, you know, or even worse, yeah, if I see those, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> the, the red ink will flow and you'll, you'll lose a lot of points. So on these predict things, don't worry about being true or false or don't worry about that. Worry about 
Well, are we going to be able to test it? And, 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 and typically you are going to be able to test it by what we do. Because you, right afterwards, after you make the prediction, you're going to collect data and you'll have numbers and you'll be able to make an observation about what kind of numbers you get. And you'll say, what, do you, what happens to your radius? So whenever you're asked to make a prediction, don't worry about whether your prediction is true or false. That's not going to affect your grade. Here's another one. How do you think the radius of an animal will change as you move across a period, you know, going left to right in a horizontal row? Uh, again, that's, you shouldn't worry about being right or wrong. You should worry about, is it falsifiable? Of course, it will be because you'll be collecting data. And from the data, you'll be able to tell what's going on. So we'll go along and you'll do the atomic radius and you'll do the ionization energy by and the electron affinity, which involves first you remove electrons, you see what energy is involved, and then you'll uh, you know, gain electrons and see what energy had to be put out in order to get that. So we'll do those two. But then at the end, the very end, we'll have periodic trends. And this will require you to go back to the tabs where we have data displayed. And you'll see either a, the table with some shading showing what's happening, or you'll see a graph that represents how the values are going up and down and changing. In any case, you'll be choosing the different things of interest, the different things that have periodic trends, and you'll be asked to answer questions about them. Finally, at the very end, the last page, you might have to do some graphing. Well, uh, we're gonna talk about this in class because it's actually kind of difficult to label the points. Ideally, we would like to label some of these points in these two different graphs. There's a graph for atomic radius, and there's also a graph for ionization energy. We'd like to be able to label them. However, it's hard to get the numbers to go on top of the pictures in a program like Microsoft Word. Now, there's a way to do it, and I can show you how to do that, uh, but I'm not gonna do that right now because this is the last page. If you get to the last page, you've done everything else, and so it becomes an exercise in just making a picture and somehow figuring out how to have a, a labeled graph. We'll do that later. Also, since I'm gonna spend time in class uh, talking about how to best handle the, the graphs here on the last page, I'm not gonna talk about the due date. I'll give you the due date the, the second time I see you. So don't worry about that. Get started, go to Gizmos, use your account to open that Gizmo, play with it, and get the first seven pages done, you know? Do the work. And then the last part, graphing the data, you know, and providing values for those uh, uh, graphs, the, that will be uh, that'll be just the whipped cream on, on top of our Sunday, you might say, the little bit extra, the gravy on our mashed potatoes. Okay, so thank you very much for giving me your attention, and I hope that was helpful. Please get started on this assignment, because the next time I see you, uh, we'll be in the thick of things. We'll be in the thick of things. And this should be almost completely done, except for the graphing. All right. Take care, students, and we'll see you soon.